Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you over from the West Coast, I think it's now quarter to seven, so hopefully you're all fully awake, um, as we are, having been up since 4 a.m. So I, I'm here from Sybase 365. Many of you know, may know Sybase as a database company. What you may not know is that it also now has a large and growing mobile software company called Sybase iAnywhere, and also a third division, which is Sybase 365, which is mobile messaging and mobile services. Um, we're here today to show and demonstrate to you Sybase 365's innovative new mobile banking platform. Um, this is software, a platform that we sell to the banks to enable them to offer mobile banking to their customers as a turnkey solution. And I think m most of you will already have, uh, have heard or be aware of these three different channels in terms of SMS, WAP, and rich client or software downloaded on the phones. So it is capable of all of those three channels. The other thing is it also contains an alerts engine for both email and SMS. And a key point, it has back office tools or an operational module that allows the banks to manage how people are using it, auditing and reporting how, how people are using their mobile banking. Sybase 365 is the only player in this space that as well as having a rich heritage in the e-banking space through its financial fusion subsidiary, also owns and manages its own messaging network with the carriers. So we actually carry over 15 billion messages per month um, between all of the carriers. So really, you know, we believe this makes us truly the only one-stop shop for mobile banking in the market. So to start off with, we just want to, to, to show a registration process. This is an example from an e-banking where a user has, is presented by their bank an option to do mobile banking. They put in a nickname for their phone, select their carrier, and put their mobile number in. And then we're delivering a token out to their phone that they're going to put back into the website. Essentially, what we're doing here is creating a link between that phone number and their bank account. So once that is done, obviously, then a user can text in to request balance or statements without having to put in their account number again. So essentially, we're capturing their mobile number that comes in with the text request and that is compared against the, the, the profile and their account ID in the M-Banking application. The other thing that if any of you have got involved in this, you'll find is, is a, a complicated piece, is how to manage the various rules and regulations and compliance with the carriers on the, on the SMS channel. So you'll find that Verizon says you have to have this text, T-Mobile says you have to have some different text, and again, if you're looking at that buy versus build conundrum, Certainly, if you buy a solution like this, it takes care of all of those compliance issues with the carriers. So here, obviously, we've gone through, and the user has registered their phone with the account. There are two things. Obviously, some users might want to set up alerts. So here, there's some of the standard alerts that are shipped with the product. Um, so back on, on the alerts page, the most common ones we find from a mobile banking point of view, people want to know, tell me if my balance goes below X amount. So what we call an account balance threshold. The other things that, again, are proving popular are fraud prevention alerts. So, for example, password lockout. If they've succumbed to a phishing attack and their, their password's being changed, they'll get an alert to their phone. They can ring up and have their account locked straight away. So now, if we can move over to the phone side, please, on the AB. So the main point that we wanted to show you today in this short seven minutes we have is a product or a feature of this platform that we call Intelligent SMS. I'm sure you're all aware how popular person-to-person -person SMS is in this marketplace. I think Nielsen came out with some research last week that showed that users are now sending more text than making voice calls. I think the average was 357 text a month versus 204 voice calls. And in the 13 to 18-year-old segment, it was 1,742 text a month. And that's the average. So hate to think what some people are sending. That's person-to-person -person SMS. On the application-to-person SMS, one of the things that's been holding back the utility and the usage of some of these programs is the need for users to remember exact syntax or keywords when they're responding or reacting with an application. So this is a thing that our, our, our natural language product within the intelligent SMS takes care of. So in this example, rather than the user having to remember balance or whatever they, they put, they can ask it in any word. So they can put how much money, dollar question mark, any combination of that. And the natural language interprets that as a balance request and will come back with that response. The other problem or the other drawback of SMS is that essentially it's an asynchronous technology. There is no link between a message sent and a reply. 
And again, that's something that this intelligent SMS, it manages the sessions within that. So if we take another example, um, the users requested for their balance, um, they found they haven't got enough money, and they want to do a transfer from their savings to their checking to buy whatever it is. Again, it's slightly more complicated syntax if you have to remember exactly the keywords. But with this, you can just put it in any free word text. So 100 from savings to checking, or transfer 100, et cetera. Any combination of that would work. So th that is taking that command, and then it will send a response back to the end user, asking them to confirm it's un understood that correctly, and saying, yeah, we understood you want to transfer $100 from savings to checkings. Confirm with Y or N. So again, it's keeping in session the information that's already been sent and allowing the user to confirm or respond with a simple Y or N or 1, 2, 3, 4 if there's a menu option. Another point that, that, that we make is some of these services, I and mean, people obviously look at the difference between SMS and WAP. The advantage of SMS, obviously, that a bank can send an outbound alert to the end user. And obviously, a lot of users do not have high-end phone or data plans. So again, SMS is the most prevalent, ubiquitous channel. However, if, uh, if some people, if you want to do an external payment or bill pay, then there are two options. Either that can still be initiated via SMS and then have an out-of-band authentication via an IVR or a WAP session, or a user indeed can go into the WAP session. And again, just aware we're running out of time, if we can quickly get up the WAP um, service um, on that. So again, users can be driven from an SMS, then go into a WAP session to make a payment. And that will pull up any preferences or payees that they've made in their e-banking. So in this case, we'll be pulling up the... So we should be on the phone, if we can. Anyway, so we can again show you the WAP and the SMS. But just to wrap up, three quick final points to make. The intelligent SMS makes it easier for your users. And also, it's a multi-channel solution, including an operational module to allow the bank to manage all of that. So we look forward to seeing all of you afterwards. Thank you.